Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and we're live on YouTube. Welcome. It's uh, Thursday, October 6th. 6th. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's stopped raining here. It's, uh, it's a bit chilly, but it is October. So hope every, hope um, we have a great month. Hope everyone it has a great month. Today is Thursday. And as you know, we are doing YouTube Live. We did a lot of Facebook Live. We're still doing that. We're on YouTube, hopefully trying to expand our audience and try to learn what unique things YouTube can bring to us. YouTube is, you know, part of Google, and uh, Google is incredible. Facebook's incredible. But we are looking at basically figuring out ways that work for all of you in the audience. So it's not really what I like or we like here on the CTS Us group. Uh, we like everything. <laughs> um, we're trying to figure out what's best for everybody, where people will go what people like to see, and how we could do things better. So that really is our goal. A couple quick things. Today is October 6th. Yesterday was October 5th. Okay, not a lot of brilliance in that, but uh, just to remind people, um, that yesterday was a sad day, uh, 11 years ago on October 5th, 2011. One of the great American stars in business, finance, and everything, just a father, a, uh, a wife, a brother, um, um, passed away, Steve Jobs. Steve passed away far too early from pancreatic cancer. Um, and uh, we do wish his family well and may the memories uh, be, uh, be so relevant to them that it kind of covers up all the sadness. But uh, Steve, you know, left a great company at Apple, left a great family. And so we uh, just remember, remember his passing. Um, and remember our fondness from him. And um, all of us at CTS Us, he was always very nice to us. Uh, and um, it, it, I knew him for 30 years. So it was quite a ride. So anyway, we're almost 30 years. But with that, uh, let's get started here. Um, the um, topic is uh, liver tumors, CT of liver tumors, malignant. Last week, we spoke about the various benign tumors. Now let's speak about malignancies. Well, as you know, um, when we think about malignancies, we're either talking about one of two things, a primary tumor, hepatoma, cholangiosarcoma, cholangiocarcinoma, angiosarcoma, um, fibrosarcoma, uh, uh, a biliary cyst adenocarcinoma. But most of the primary tumors we think about are, are hepatoma. If it's a younger patient, we could think about hepatoblastoma. We, or younger, a little bit teenager, we think about a fibrolamella hepatoma. Okay, so that's um, a spread. And then, of course, metastasis. We see far more Mets, all of us in practice see far more Mets than we do primary tumors. What things we commonly see, lung cancer, metastatic to liver, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, renal cancer. We see involvement by infiltrating tumors like lymphoma, melanoma, uh, you can go on and on. Every tumor that exists can go to the liver. Some go to the liver more frequently than others. Some go to the liver earlier than others. But they go to the liver. Now, in terms of metastasis, let's do METS first. What do I think about? Well, I think about the protocol. If you're looking for METS and you don't know the primary, you would do dual phase imaging. I think dual phase imaging is a single best way, arterial and venous, to pick up liver metastasis and to classify liver lesions. Now, if I knew the patient had colon cancer and I only wanted one phase, Venus would be an ideal phase. Venus is the best phase for hypovascular mets. Colon cancer is one of them. If you wanted um, a vascular lesion like a neuroendocrine tumor metastatic to liver, you would do arterial phase. That's the best. But if you have something like breast cancer, the mets can be arterial, dominant, very vascular, or venous, hypovascular. So again, um, if I'm working someone up, I think at least the first time dual phase is ideal for picking up tumors and classifying. You don't want to say the patient has a MET when they have hemangioma or FNH, hepatic adenoma. Follow-ups, okay, then you can maybe choose the, choose the one that works best. 
surely if it's venous, like a colon cancer. Um, liver mats are a challenge. Again, the biggest thing is very small lesions, too small to classify, under five millimeters. Hard to say if it's a cyst or a tiny met. Sometimes PET can be helpful. Sometimes MR can be helpful. I think the challenge is not to call everything too small to classify, but only those things that are too small to classify, call them too small to classify. Sometimes it's just hard to tell. Uh, Mets can be cystic, necrotic. You want to be really careful. I think things that help me also on the dual phase, sometimes hypovascular lesions, particularly pancreatic cancer is a good example, but colon is also. On the arterial phase, they'll have perfusion changes around the lesion. Simple cysts do not have perfusion changes near them unless they're like 15 centimeters and it's compressing normal parenchyma extensively. So one of the things that can help me, while even on a hypovascular tumor, arterial phase is good, it's showing me the perfusion changes. Perfusion changes are indeed very important, helping me distinguish malignant from benign and avoiding a lot of these too small to classify lesions. Okay, that's one point. Another point about um, metastasis, the importance of iodine, being able to pick up the lesions. When we were short of contrast and all of a sudden you're using 80 or 70 cc's, that, make you, that makes you feel good. But you know, you're going to miss a lot of liver lesions, particularly smaller ones, because it's really the grams of iodine that help determine how good you are in picking up lesions. Also, with speed of injection, if you inject a 1 cc or 2 cc's, you're not going to do as well as surely arterial, but also venous, unless you um, inject at that 4 to 5 cc level where you get the vascular mapping and you really get the perfusion changes and everything else that we really, really, really want to see. Now, that would cover METs. So, again, um, you know, the primary, it's easy to figure out which will work better, but that's not always true. And again, that you don't want to overcall metastasis either to small lesions or lesions which are really hemangiomas. So even though the patient has malignancy, make sure you're not confusing it with a benign lesion. That happens all the time, right? So be careful with that. Second thing is hepatoma. So hepatomas typically rise in cirrhotic livers. The lesions are typically very vascular. If they're in younger patients, then it's more likely a fibrolamella hepatoma, which are very vascular, a little better outcome than classic a hepatoma, but again, classic hepatoma typically is a cirrhotic liver. Fibrolamella is not. With hepatoma, it can be a solitary mass, can be small, can be large. Any vascular lesion in a cirrhotic liver to me is hepatoma until proven otherwise. Hemangiomas we don't worry about because they typically collapse with cirrhotic livers because they're basically a vessel, they're venous lakes basically. And if you have cirrhosis and fibrosis, they collapse. Vascular lesion in the liver, a patient who has a history of cirrhosis, is hepatoma until proven otherwise. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. Okay? Period. Now, um, hepatomas can be multiple, so you want to look for that. Hepatomas uh, can have prominent feeding vessels, so MIP imaging can be helpful. Hepatoma can also spread via nodes, the portal region. It could also extend involve the adrenal glands. Big adrenal masses can be due to metastatic hepatoma. So that's something else to consider. 90% of hepatomas are very vascular. That's the most important thing to me. They can have a pseudocapsule, so they look well-defined. Don't let that pseudocapsule confuse you. Uh, the tumors are typically infiltrative. If they're localized, they can be resected. Um, so we got to really figure out the extent of tumor. Cholangios are more infiltrating. Cholangios, like hepatomas, can be multiple, or they can be solitary and infiltrative. They're more likely to cause ductilitation, which is unusual with primary hepatocellular. They tend to extend along the ductal regions. So you can see a dilated common duct, but real thickening, and then occlusion. Occlusion can be distal. Occlusion can be high up in the liver, like a Klatskin tumor. You have infiltration vessels, infiltration around the porta, extension to the uh, duodenum. Uh, cholangios do have more likely dilated ducts within the liver than does hepatoma. That's just the way it is. Um, cholangios are typically hypovascular. Sometimes you don't think about them because they're small, infiltrating the duct. 
Sometimes you think about them, but you assume it's a big mass, must be a hepatoma, because hepatomas can be hypovascular. Again, if I see a mass and I see a lot of ducts, uh, particularly a common duct and then some intrahepatic ducts, I'm thinking about cholangio. Hepatomas can occasionally obstruct ducts, but that's unusual, and it's really late in the disease. Um, cholangios are the ones I like to think about. As I mentioned, cholangios are hypovascular as opposed to hepatomas, classically vascular. So now when you think about it, if you have a vascular lesion in the liver, you got to say hepatoma, you got to say metastasis, right? Because it could be metastatic um, renal cell or, you know, for example. You also, of course, have the differential between things like hepatic adenomas and FNH and hemangiomas. But hopefully with dual phase imaging, you can make that distinction. Though I will admit sometimes hepatic adenomas can be great mimickers and look like everything else. So it can be tricky against hepatoma. Cholangio, again, dilated ducts really make it good for me. Uh, things like biliary cyst adenomas are rare. It's a, it's a cystic lesion in the liver with nodules. Cystic mets can occur, most commonly ovarian and just tumors. So most lesions are hypovascular, necrotic as mets, but some cystic ones do occur. And again, when you see that appearance, you got to think about those. As a pitfall at times, liver abscesses and necrotic liver mets can look very similar. Again, history is helpful. Liver functions can be elevated. Patient can lose weight. Patient can be febrile with abscess or with tumor necrosis. So we see them, right lobe is more common with abscess, though not necessarily. We see them E. coli is number one source, but you can have, have all sorts of sources, amoebic, hydatid, or almost any type of infection. So again, when you're taking care of a patient who has a poor history, don't always assume it's cancer, assume it could be infection, particularly if the patient's febrile. So that's another pitfall. We have a number of pitfalls in the liver poor injection rate, poor volume of contrast, lack of dual phase imaging, poor timing, arterial or and venous. All of those things will create problems for you and diminish your ability to detect lesions and to classify lesions. One of the things about our protocol and the use of multiplanar and 3D is not only lesion detection. I will admit lesion detection is the most important thing. If there's no lesion detection, this conversation should not exist. But it's not always. And um, I think you need to detect, you need to classify, and you need to manage. Is this a classic hepatoma? Do you need a biopsy? Is it benign? Do you need to do nothing? Is there another study you can do? What is it you need to do? Is it breast cancer, which looks like a cirrhotic liver, vascularity, but it's simply a response that's pseudocirrhosis. So there are a lot of pitfalls. And I don't have time to go into all the pitfalls, but there are a bunch of lectures on CTS Us. You can listen to them. There's a zillion cases on the teaching file. You can look at them. There's a lots of pearls which cover this topic in the pearl section. You can look at them. So what more can you ask for? So I'm going to stop there, but I did have a joke, and I did not want to give this joke, but I'm just going to say it. It's a time of year where people can use a laugh, and this joke insults nobody, and I heard it at the synagogue, so that means it's 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 PG. It was a good joke. There was this couple, Abe and Sarah. They were 60 years old. It was their 40th anniversary. It was their birthday and anniversary, basically combined. And uh, they were good people. And God sent an angel to give each of them one wish, one wish only. So the angel asked Sarah first, "Well, what's your wish?" She says, "Well, I always wanted to go to a fancy hotel." A, five-star hotel and stay there and enjoy a week's vacation. So the angel goes poof, and in her hands are two tickets, Ritz-Carlton, Miami Beach, very nice brand new hotel, first class there for you, and vouchers for anything and everything anybody could want. Okay, so she was pretty happy. Then the angel goes to Abe, Abe, it's your turn, one wish, whatever you want, I will do. So Abe says, you know, I'm 60, but you know what I would really like? I would like to be married to someone 30 years younger than me. So the angel said, no problem, woof, and made Abe 90. Okay. 
get the joke? Okay. It's maybe a good time of year where be careful what you wish for. Okay. That's maybe a, the takeaway message from that joke. If you don't look at, if you don't like that joke, let me know. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll speak to the people in the Catskills or something like that, or at least at the synagogue. And with that, I thank everybody for their attention. Uh, also, we do ask you to let us know what topics you want. We keep coming up with topics, and I know sometimes people tell us what they want, and we'll make it happen. But we need you to tell us. And with that, I'm going to end the stream. Islands in the Stream, Kenny Loggins. What a great song with Dolly Parton. So on this screen here, you can't see it, but it says end stream. I'm ending the stream. Have a great day.